The Netherlands and Belgium are two of my favorite countries that I've ever had the opportunity to learn about here on FTD Facts. And I've found that both are not only just fascinating and culturally interesting, but they both have a very positive attitude in the world today. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to FTD Facts. I'm Dave Wapple, and today I'm going to be looking at the differences and maybe even some similarities between the two awesome nations known as the Netherlands and Belgium. Now, this is kind of like a continuation series where we look at certain countries and we try to learn as much as as we can about them, which I'm going to get into a little bit later. I'm going to tell you guys all about our playlists that we do if you want to learn more about either of these countries. But anyways, I think we should just get started here. If it's your first time here, welcome to the channel. Hit the subscribe button if you like learning about different places around the world. So let's just start it off talking about the simple, basic things, and that is good old-fashioned population and those particular numbers. Now, Belgium, it ranks 79th in the world in terms of population with approximately 11,420,163 people. The Netherlands is a little bit bigger, coming in at 66th with 17,283,008 people. And of course, with this population, let's talk about something else that mirrors that, and that is the land size. Because although they are very similar in size, Belgium is approximately 30,528 kilometers square, with the Netherlands being 42,508 kilometers square. Now, actually, for that, when it comes to the land size, I'm not 100% sure if that's just the mainland. Like, for example, the Netherlands, especially, they have islands that they own around the world. I'm not sure if that's been thrown in there, but I'm going to talk about that later because I want to continue talking about population. Now, of course, for these two countries, the people that live in it identify different from each other. For example, in Belgium, they are known as Belgians, and in the Netherlands, they are known not as the Netherlandies, but they are known as the Dutch. Which actually, I found it kind of weird. I mean, if you talk about the Dutch, they're the only people in the world that actually kind of do this, I think. And that's a major difference where, like, Belgians, they're from Belgium, and it's like other countries around the world. You've got, like, myself, Canadians, I'm from Canada. You know, you've got Americans, you've got Brazilians, you've got Australians. I mean, you got even the English who are from England, and they're, they're Britons, they're from Britain. But the Dutch, it's not like it's called Dutchland. I mean, there's the Deutschland, which is, like, German, but it's not... Dutch lender. It's not, they're not Hollandese or they're not the Netherlandese or Netherlandians. They're considered the Dutch. It's, I always thought that was kind of weird. So that's a major difference. However, when it comes to the people within this country, we should just mention, for example, in the Netherlands, 79% of these people identify as Dutch, while approximately 6.3% identify as other Europeans, and about 4.9% identify as Indo. And of course, below 4.9%, there's a bunch of others that come from different places around the world. But Belgium, it's a little bit different because they sometimes call it the immigration country of Europe. Well, sort of, because they kind of have a lot of immigrants there. For example, one of their latest studies, they found that 25% of the population identify as foreigners, which was up from 2007, which the foreign population equaled approximately 12.9%. And of these people, which they sometimes identify as New Belgians, about 49% of them came from Europe, while the rest of them came from non-Western countries. Also, when it comes to the Dutch, there's a little bit of a land sort of dispute within Belgium, and that is the region known as Flanders. And what makes this location within Belgium very interesting is it definitely shows an overlap of culture and language. Because for Flanders, this location pretty much is identified as a Dutch region. And as a matter of fact, although they're not all considered Dutch, about 68% of the population lives in Flanders. And of course, down south, there's the section known as Wallonia, which they kind of have a language that is part of the French family. So you could say that Belgium is kind of a cross between the Dutch and the French, and they kind of merged together and created one kind of nation. Which also makes some people wonder why, okay, in Belgium is, um, you know, Flanders not part of the Netherlands and Wallonia not part of France. I don't know. Well, actually, believe it or not, there is a reason why the country of Belgium just exists in the first place. And with that in mind, let's talk about one of the big differences, and that is the fact that the Netherlands has been around since it was proclaimed on July 26th, 1581. This is after they said to Spain they kind of want to be their own country, and they basically didn't want to be a part of what was known as Spanish Netherlands. But however, nowadays, the Netherlands is listed as a kingdom in which it became one in 1815. However, Belgium didn't really have the opportunity 
opportunity to be its own nation at a very younger time. Because for them, some of them didn't like the issues of what was going on within the Netherlands and within France, that they ended up splitting, creating their own country in 1830. Also, one huge difference between Belgium and the Netherlands, especially when it comes to its history, is colonialization. Because this was very important, especially for the Netherlands, in like the 16th, 17th, 18th, and 19th century. Because for the Dutch, they'd been doing it for a much longer period and had traces of their colonialism beginning in 1543. Of course, the Belgians, they were a little bit later in the game. They started their colonialism around 1840 and the 1850s. Overall, in history, the Dutch has had colonies in over 29 different countries. Some of the bigger ones that come to mind are, like, say, in America, for example, you had, like, New York regions, you had, like, New Jersey, you had, you know, Massachusetts, you know, they had Dutch colonies there. As a matter of fact, major Dutch accents and dialects existed in New Jersey till about 1921. Africa is also a big one. The term Afrikaans really comes from the Dutch. Basically, many settlers went over there for farming, which they were called the Boers. And as of 2006, they say there's approximately 22 million people who speak Afrikaans. And of course, it's the second language in the country known as South Africa. We can't also forget the popular Caribbean. They had islands like St. Martin, in which today's world is considered half Dutch. Aruba, Curacao, and of course in Suriname, Dutch is also the main language. One of the bigger ones that we also got to remember is South Asia and Southeast Asia. As a matter of fact, Indonesia had Dutch influences at the time of recording this video for at least 350 years. I don't know how long this video is going to exist for, I'm not going to lie. As a matter of fact, some historians and linguistic specialists say that 20% of Indonesian words come from Dutch origins. Now, jump into the 1840s and the 1850s, because Europe and many European countries had many colonies around the world, they were like, yo, we got to be part of this action too. As a matter of fact, did you know that Hawaii was this close to being considered a Belgian territory? Basically, the story is that King Leopold I made a deal with Ladd and Co. to colonize the island in 1843 but of course due to some conflict issues and i mean like actual wars and stuff like that this did not happen belgium also had colonies in guatemala the city of tianjin in china and also had the island known as Comacina, but only for a year until it went back to italy and one of the biggest spots they also colonized was the congo in 1885 and with that, due to major problems, they also had to forcibly take it in 1908. However, for both of these countries in the mid-20th century, most of their colonies had pushed for independence. For example, in 1945, Indonesia was given its independence from the Netherlands. And of course, for the Congo, it wasn't until the 1960s that it also got its independence from Belgium. Let's also talk about one other major difference, and that is a cultural thing, and that is marijuana. That's right, smokes and lighten up. By the way, guys, I know all you guys are probably sitting out there you're know, like well, what's with the toque and the hat are you a pothead yourself nah man i'm not i can't smoke it does terrible things to me i have a heart condition so let's all save the jokes for later okay so within belgium believe it or not it actually is illegal when it comes to buying it however since 2003 personal possession is considered decriminalized and to not get charged by the police one has to be over 18 years old and can only carry a maximum of three grams netherlands is a little bit different most people like to think that oh my gosh it's the netherlands you can just smoke anywhere. It's, yo, know, it's just a free place. That's not actually true. Believe it or not, they do say that marijuana is considered illegal. However, the truth be told, it's pretty much tolerated. Please don't get too bent out of shape for it. And actually, you can smoke it and purchase it in shops, like coffee shops. That's how you get it in like places like Amsterdam. Also, while we're on it, considering we're talking about Amsterdam, let's talk about the red light district, you know, prostitution and all that stuff. Basically, how prostitution works in the Netherlands is that it is considered legal, and of course, one can operate brothels. This legalization happened in the year 2000. However, in Belgium, prostitution is also considered legal. However, pimping and soliciting is not. You're not allowed to do that, so you can't be standing on the street being like, Yo, boy, what's up? Is that how they do it? I've never, never got a prostitute before, so... Yeah. Also similar to Amsterdam, Belgium has its own red light districts where they both do have those windows where girls can stand out there and be like, yo, this is what you are going to get. So it's not really soliciting. It's kind of like window shopping. It's a bit different. Yo, by the way, guys, before I continue, considering we're on a really good roll, 
if you guys really like learning about these two countries, maybe you're from Belgium and you want to learn more about your country, you're from the Netherlands and vice versa, just letting you guys know we've talked, well, I've talked about these countries much in the past and I've done playlists. So for the Netherlands guys, the Dutch, boom, there's a playlist about your country. You guys can continue to learn and see all the videos that we've talked about when it comes to the Netherlands. And for the Belgians, here you go right here. Boom, you can check that one out. Feel free. It's a playlist just all on our videos around your countries. So I'm also going to put them at the end of the video. And I'm also going to put them in the description box below if you want to continue learning about the differences here. So let's just uh, keep going. Boom. Because also I heard this really weird kind of fact about the difference between the two. And I don't know if it's true or not. But the Dutch, you guys can shed some light on it down there in the comment section. And that is compared to Belgian. The thing is the Dutch apparently like to drink milk during lunch i don't know if, i don't know if that's a thing is that a thing let me know down there I'm, I'm curious so yeah anyways there's more because considering we're on milk we gotta talk about one amazing thing and that is food my belly is getting excited i love food so i'm just gonna mention two major highlights that are different from these two nations there's so much culinary stuff i'm not getting into it guys because there's so much but in the Netherlands, you have a major difference from Belgium, and that is the fact that the Dutch are really well known for making cheese. So much that every Christmas I try to find actual Dutch kind of Netherlands cheese. It's a great thing. Gouda. Oh yeah. But as for Belgium, they are more huge on an international level for their good old-fashioned waffles. Waffles are great. I love them. I don't know why people are starting to put them on hamburgers with chicken and stuff. I'm going to say this. No. Just... No, not you eat it with like Belgian waffles. That's that's as far as you go. N nothing else. No chicken. Yuck. Anyways, that's just food. Let's talk about politics. Because in the Netherlands, believe it or not, voting is not considered compulsory, meaning that you don't have to do it by law. If you just don't want to vote, you don't have to. Kind of here in Canada, it's not compulsory. I won't get fined. I won't get in trouble or anything like that. Belgium, mm -mm, it's not the same way. As a matter of fact, it's mandatory that everybody votes. And I don't necessarily know what kind of punishment you get if you don't vote, if it's a fine or anything like that. Again, Belgians, let me know down there. I'm always curious. It's interesting to know these things. Speaking about government, they're very similar governments. They are constitutional monarchies, but they're slightly different. Because the Netherlands is classified as a unitary parliamentary constitutional monarchy. God, that was really hard to say. I don't know why. But basically, they have a king and a queen sort of thing. Belgium is a little bit different, but similar. It is a federal parliamentary constitutional monarchy. And that means they also have a king and a queen sort of thing set up. What is the difference? Well, I'll explain. For the Netherlands, King Willem Alexander is considered the head of state with limited powers. And of course, similar to that in Belgium, King Philip is also in charge, but has limited powers as well. Also for these two monarchs, they do have different levels of power. Because in terms of military, King Philip is considered the commander in chief of the Belgium armed forces. Whereas the Netherlands, it's given to the entire head cabinet government and not one man. Oops, yeah, I forgot I was going to mention the difference between unitary and federal forms of government so just in case you don't get confused so okay here's how it works in the netherlands basically unitary means that the cabinet the government head cabinet is in charge and makes a lot of the decisions federal it just means it's shared between you know three different sections of the government you've got federal state and local so they all share in the decision making process that's how it works. Lastly, I also just got to mention sports because it's a big thing within these two countries. In the Netherlands, they say approximately two thirds of the entire population participate in sports regularly. And about 4.5 million of these people have joined at least one of the 35,000 sporting clubs. So the big sports, you've got soccer, football that are big in actually Belgium and the Netherlands. You've also got cycling and Formula One racing. But one thing that the Dutch are really known well for, especially in terms of the Olympics, is speed skating. And they've got a lot of medals and awards for it. Belgians, they're a little bit more well known for their cycling. As a matter of fact, they've won the most victories in the Tour de France after France itself. Of course, they also host the Formula One World Championship Belgium Grand Prix. And in 2010, it said about 13% of the population was involved with some sort of sport, 
But of course, they got this figure from the 1.35 million people that are part of sporting clubs. So I don't really know how accurate that is. You could be going for a run and that just doesn't count. So, I mean... It, it, it means people are active, you know? So anyways, guys, that is it for me. That is looking at the differences between these two nations. Very similar, but also very different. And man, they've been separated for a long time since, yeah, like 1800s. And it's, of course, over time, they're going to develop their own things, their own way of doing things. But it's good to know that they're still very good partners and they still have a lot of traditions that come back and forth between the two. Anyways, my name is Dave Walpole. And like I said, before you guys get out of here, be sure to check out those awesome playlists i really recommend it people really do like learning about their own countries so that's kind of the thing that you want to do so it's in the description box below and it's going to be right after my ugly face gets off this camera so other than that hit that subscribe button if it's your first time here and i will see you guys later okay okay all right that's it i know i talk a lot really really fast okay all right bye Okay, guys, here they are. Playlists. You got the Belgium playlist and you've got the Netherlands playlist. Whatever you feel like choosing, you can just do whatever you want. I mean, if you don't even want to watch them and you just want to go watch Netflix, I don't blame you. I've heard there's some really good things on Netflix. I don't. I, I personally don't watch a lot of TV, but yeah, too busy making videos. Okay, I'm out of here. Bye.